Hãy Your Honor, first, I think it might be helpful to explain a bit about uh, our understanding of why for three, four crimes, I believe, the trial chamber did not enter under joint criminal enterprise. And I cannot find my note at the moment, but I believe those were for um, exterminations for the first and second course transfer for political prosecutions at Tulfo Trey and also for enforced disappearances as to course. To be honest, until we received the answer from the question from your honors about recharacterization, we did not understand why that happened and assumed that there had been a mistake in the closing it's clear that the accused charged with all of these crimes under joint criminal enterprise pursuant to the closing order. in paragraph, I believe it's 1525 of the closing order, the closing order links individual policies to individual crimes such as murder, extermination, and political persecution. When the trial chamber severed the case, they indicated, as your honors know the history of that, that they were going to the first and second course transfer and later adding to the code they indicated that that would mean that as regards to the five policies, the implementation of only two policies would be, um, would be litigated fully in the trial. And those two policies, I believe, were the targeting policy and the forced transfer policy. However, it's important to understand how the policies were dealt with in the case 2-1 in the trial. While the chamber said it wouldn't go into the implementation of these other policies in the parties or not in different locations around the country at different times, the existence of the policies of all five policies was an issue litigated, and the parties were entitled to ask questions about it and litigate it throughout case 2 one. So all five policies were the subject of case 2 one but the judge's restrictive evidence of its implementation and locations to the two policies, the targeting policy and the policy on um, forced transfers to the three sets of crimes, crime scenarios, the first and second forced transfer in Tupo Tre. The, the co-prosecutors really admit that we understood throughout the trial that the JC applied to all crimes. We didn't understand that the trial chamber believed that there was some limitation on JCE because of the seventh order. Everything that we've seen from how the defense behaved, including their final submissions, both in writing, orally, uh, and their questions during the case, would indicate to us that the defense also was under the impression that joint criminal enterprise applied the trial chamber caught at some point, maybe it was when they were writing the judgment, that, that certain policies only applied to certain crimes in paragraph 1525 of the closing order. So, of course, in the civil law, and particularly in the statute of this court, it's clear that the judges, your honors, the appeal chamber has a right to recharacterize the facts uh, to give a new legal characterization to the facts found by the trial chamber and the evidence shown. It's our submission, of course, that you have to do that to make sure that the defendants have an opportunity to defend on the facts that you're, you're considering and that um, nothing was done to prevent them from defending on those factual findings. We submit that the defense, in fact, defend on all the factual findings 
มีจุดมีบางประประกาศสำหรับจะเลยอังคารในสถานอุปกรณ์กรรมร่วมได้มีโจในอุปกรณ์มาทำจำนวนบูนเตี้ยตันใต้อังจำนวนจำนวนสลาดมบงบางอันวัดสำหรับสถานอุปกรณ์กรรมร่วมโดยจุดมุ่ยคือการจุ่มเลี้ยงจีปีคือการสำหรับบังเกียร์การจุ่มเลี้ยงในบังคับให้นังกาบัตรคลุ้นในบังคับในตัวให้นังการในตัวปูชรีการสำหรับจีปีให้เดลบอสลาดมบงบันสำหรับชาเทียบซ้ำแต่งอัพในทิพย์สมัตนามัตมังอัตนามัตคือชีอตัวมตดาการสมรัชานุนเจียนเคียสมพรคือเจียในมวยในให้อุกตกรรมนี้ให้ปกติบานโจร่วมตดาการประพฤติบัตรอุกตกรรมนี้เมทวีกับเปกได้บานกาเปียตเลยทิพย์สมตังอันนี้โดยเฉพาะคือทามันอาจในเยี่ยทามีนกาลงลบเปียนตะเลสตัตบันกาจมนุมจมเรียประกอบได้จุดตะทอนอะไร And I'm going to move on now to just a few minor closing remarks on this issue at this time. On the different issues this time. One is that we again heard from the defense that they believed that the zones were independent. And zone armies and things were happening, killing of soldiers happened differently in different zones around the country. This is something. And yesterday, yesterday afternoon, the council said that they were saying that they found support in the testimony of Philip Short. Philip Short. I would like to read you an answer that Philip Short gave to a question posed by Nunchi as counsel. This is on the 8th of May, 2013, at about 4:22 in the afternoon. Mr. Short said it would not have been possible. For zone commanders to act against or outside the broad policy consensus which had been laid down by the center, you are not dealing with an army that descends into banditry, which, on a large scale, which takes matters into its own head and carries out massacres. You are dealing with an army which was quite small, not an enormous force, which was very rigidly controlled. So the trial chamber, we believe, found that there was a hierarchical structure where the orders of the center were carried out, and that's fully supported by the evidence. It's also fully supported by the evidence about how the killing of American public officers and officials occurred throughout the country in all the zones, often with some of the same tactics, such as telling people they were going to meet the king or tricks to have people identify themselves as so officers or officials in order to get their old jobs back to get the rights. So the trial chamber's findings are fully supported on this point. Um, there was another question that I wanted to briefly address which your Honor asked yesterday. yesterday. Judge Millard asked, Mr. Millard asked yesterday uh, to my colleague, and that was about the temporal scope, uh, which the defense also got into in their arguments this morning about whether or not how the trial chamber dealt with evidence outside the temporal scope of the charges in the jurisdiction of the court or the sentence. It is a well-established principle that in order to prove the crime occurred, the mens rea, particularly the intent of persons, um, the knowledge of individuals that crimes will occur or substantially likely to occur, a court can and should look at evidence that shows pattern of conduct or its probative as to intent. Clearly, for example, the fact that civilians were mistreated, that captured soldiers were executed throughout for years of a conflict, would put leaders on notice of what's likely to occur. 
Evidence was excluded when it was clearly irrelevant. Uh, evidence that we could think of yesterday hearing the defense make that complaint was uh, the trial chamber limited the defense questions restricted the defense in asking about a 1980s program by the then government to uh, pay five to use civilian labor to build a defensive line on the border of Thailand. The defense has never shown how that was relevant to the charges of the case too. The single argument they made <laughs> they claimed was relevant to the numbers of people that died during the decade period from the regime as opposed to those who died from that program. The total number of killed is not an essential issue. It's the end. 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 May have very slight relevance to case two, two, but none of the crimes charged is the exact number of people that died and the essential elements of the offense in this case. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honors, very much for your time. Of course, we're very happy to answer any questions, Your Honors. Thank you. 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 จำนวนมาเพิ่มอีกทีจังเราหดเอาเมาดอกมุ้ยยืนนั่งโจมมาวิ่งรวมชื่อสำหรับจริงกล่าวเชิญ